Hello, internet people. Um, pardon, I'm not a video person. I'm going to be very awkward. I just wanted to give you guys a sort of in-depth, more in-depth look into the Chimera. You know, sort of see it in real life, not just pictures. Um, so hopefully, you know, this will help people figure out how it works, kind of figure out why it exists and why I made it. Um, so here's a Chimera. Let me just make sure I got the framing right. Yeah, that's pretty much right. So this is a Chimera Mark 7. It is, um, as far as I know, pretty much the first hobby grade blaster that is reverse breech. And what does reverse breech mean? Reverse breech means there is no pusher in here. So usually with uh, this sort of blaster, the plunger tube remains static and you have a pusher that cycles the darts. And the problem with that is you have the dead space and the added moving parts of having that pusher uh, cutting into your performance. So what I do instead with the Chimera is the whole mag cycles. So the entire, I don't know how well you can see this in here, but I'll take a mag out so you can see. So the entire firing mechanism cycles and the barrel, if you can see that in there, remains fixed. So how it loads is you prime it back, it moves back relative to the barrel, and then as you feed forwards, it feeds a dart into the barrel. And that means that there is practically no dead space. There's less, effectively, less moving parts than something like a Caliburn, and the performance is really good, as I will demonstrate um, yeah this model takes angled talons it that is it doesn't only take angled talons this model takes straight talons the only differences between them are different prints there there are no hardware differences so you can print whatever whatever mags you use whatever mags you have there's a version for you to print so I'll just demonstrate this real quick so one downside of this mechanism is you can only put a mag in when it's primed because you have the barrel going through the feed lips, but I think that's a fine price to pay. So mag goes in there, stays in real nice, and then you just use it like a normal blaster. So it's fed. And you can see here, this only happens with the angled talon version, but uh, if you do have that version, the bolt will actually lock forward, or lock backwards, on an empty magazine. So you have a nice, you have a nice way of knowing your magazine is empty. That doesn't happen on the straight talon version, just because of how the follower works, but straight talon version still works. And I'm out of darts. I'm getting some misfires here. Um, the blaster isn't 1,000% consistent right now. It's pretty good. Performance is, you know, mid... I don't want to say mid-200s. It's over 200 feet per second. The ones I made here average about 225. And that's that one doesn't have a scar barrel, but this one does have a scar barrel. So, like, performance is adequate. It'll get over 200 FPS in the future. It'll probably get over 250. There's a little bit of consistency. There's a little bit of variance in it right now. But I, I still think it's a really good blaster. And has an integrated Picatinny, obviously. It has uh, integrated sling points on the front and back. So you can put a sling on it. You can obviously put a foregrip on here. This one has the integrated scar barrel. So that's a five line fishing line scar. And yeah, it also has a... Uh, has toolless takedown, which I guess I should demonstrate. Oh, another thing is uh, you can deprime it. So unlike with the Lynx, you can deprime it just because of how it works. And it also has some pretty easy takedown. All you need to do, remove these three thumb screws. It's a little tedious. It's not the best takedown in the world, but it is fairly good takedown. Um, you also kind of you kind of want to brace the blaster up against you because there's preload in the spring, so it'll kind of spring apart once you have all the screws out. So you take those three thumb screws out, and you take out this detent pin, and you got the whole back of the blaster off. So then you have access to the spring, obviously. You have access to the plunger. 
So you can clean that, re-lubricate that if needed. Goes back in. Uh, spring in it right now is a Turf Pro 25. Uh, other springs, many other springs will fit. Turf Pro 25 is the only one I'm including with the kit uh, at the moment. And also on the back half of the blaster, you can see, I don't know if you can see, you can barely see, oh, I don't got that in frame, catch in there. So that's, that's a steel plated catch, the same catch that's used in Venturi's. And there's a steel plated catch washer on the plunger there. So everything, everything that needs to be metal is metal. So it should last a very long time. And to get this back together, all I need to do, line this up. And I have no idea if anything I'm doing is in frame. I just, you know, me saying word probably is gonna help. And oh god, I'm sweating. And yeah, you kind of gotta get it. Get that in there. Get the thumb screws in. Tricky. Yep, get the thumb screws in. And you just gotta get the detent pin for the trigger linkage. I've obviously done this many times. And there you go. And then it's back together, ready to use. And it is dry fire safe because just like the links, it has an air brake, so the plunger is never actually slamming into anything. It's stopped prior to collision by that air brake, so you can just dry fire it all day it's very strong so the blaster is technically still in beta uh the only things that are really beta about it are the firing consistency thing i told you about although it's not really like sometimes it'll fire 80 fps sometimes it'll fire 200 fps it's like sometimes it'll fire 205 fps sometimes it'll fire 260 fps so that can be a problem if you have a certain fps limit for your games but like as a blaster, it is very much ready uh, for people to mess around with and for people to help me make it better in the future. So I have kits available on my store, which should be linked <laughs> in the description. <laughs> Never thought I'd say those words. Uh, yeah, my, my store should be linked in the description. You can find, I still have a few Chimera kits left on there. And I also have Venturi Mark 8 kits ready, along with Venturi Mark 8 pre bolts and I don't have pre-built for the Chimera yet, but as soon as that's out of beta, that will be an option too. So yeah, wow, that, that's the most words I've said in like three years.